Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 175 of my poker vlog. For this one, we play a 2-5 session at Sarasota, Florida, the one Eye Jacks Poker Club. I have a ton of interesting hands on this one to go over, so we're going to get right into them. First hand of note. We go straight to the 2-5 table this day, and we are greeted with King Queen of Hearts from the cutoff. When it folds to me, I make it $20. Folds all the way to the big blind, who 3 bets to $70. I think 4 betting is kind of an overplay. We get to play in position. Our hand's not phenomenal, but it's definitely not worth folding. So when I make the call, we end up going heads up to a flop of 8-5 deuce with 2 clubs. My opponent continues for $55, which is somewhat standard with all ace, x, all pocket pairs. Pretty much his entire three betting range on a board this low for exactly the reason that is shown. I have a strong hand, but it doesn't connect in any reasonable way. So kind of tough to navigate to a win without even a backdoor heart draw. So I kind of just sigh fold and we lose a three bet pot to start the day. That's okay. Now we look down at King 10 of spades from the small blind. A middle position player raises to $20. I am the only caller. We end up going heads up to a flop, which comes four deuce deuce rainbow with one spade. I check it in flow as I would do with pretty much all my hands, and I'm somewhat surprised to see my opponent bet $25. This is a board that connects with a small blind a lot harder. I have pretty much the only person that can have a deuce. Additionally, I think I'm more likely to have ace three, three five, ace five, all the gut shots and over cards that connect a little harder with this board, not really willing to fold, as well as fives plus. So I'm going to happily make the call here, two overs, backdoor, flush draw, and we get a pretty interesting card at the five of spades. One of my main goals for 2024 is to develop my leading range on all streets. I think it's an aspect of a game that most people are very understudied and underprepared on, so... When the five of spades peels off, this is going to be the board and hand where I do a pot size donk lead of $75. I would do this if I had any deuce, any ace three, three five, pocket fives, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, two overs and spades. Such a wide range filled with a ton of value all the way up to nutted hands. So I love leading here with my exact holding and my opponent pretty quickly folds. So the turn lead bluff works this time. Next turn lead, hopefully I have it. Following that, I look down at Ace-King offsuit in the low jack. The button straddles to $10. There are three limps. I think the appropriate size here would be 80, so that's what I bet. Three times the bet, plus one, plus one, plus one. 80 seems like the right sizing here. Only one of the limpers decides to call, so we end up going heads up to a flop, which comes King Deuce Deuce. Checks to me, I think my hand is so strong, I can give up a free card. My opponent had like Jack 10. Hopefully he turns a jack. I can just call one or multiple bets going forward. Additionally, if my opponent had like 8s, 9s, 10s, he's probably going to bet himself on the turn, so I think checking is the best option on this one. Turn is the king of clubs. So we fill up. It's somewhat disappointing because if my opponent somehow had king, queen, king, jack, we're going to miss a ton of value on this hand as we're going to chop a lot of the time. But my opponent checks to me again. Seems like I'm going to have to put some money in the middle now. I mean, I have a full house. I can't wait forever. I go for a very small bet. Don't want to price out his pocket fives, sixes, the lowest of pocket pairs. Even some ace highs might peel here for $50, but my opponent pretty much snap folds. So I guess he didn't have a whole lot. Disappointing to have a full house and your opponent have dust. After that, I'm in the small blind with ace four of diamonds. There's two limps. In the small blind, I complete big blind checks. So we're four ways to a limp pot, which comes ace, king, six with two diamonds? Oh wow, what a dream flop. I decide that I have so much board locked up, I'm going to go for a check raise on this one from the small blind. When I check, the big blind bites, betting 20 seems awesome. Under the gun calls, cutoff calls, well now the check raise is going to be a little bit bigger. I was going to go like 60 to 50 because I have so much board locked up. But now we're going to raise it up to 80. Someone should have a piece of this board strong enough to continue. I am behind a weaker ace x some king x is probably going to call and behind and i'm beating all other flush draws so not worried about too many runouts big blind folds under gun limp raises to 220 because that's a thing damn it you burger punk you son of a bitch and the cutoff folds at this point i put my opponent squarely on pocket sixes it's like the only hand that i can even visualize that limps under the gun and then goes for a call raise on this particular board 
but even against pocket sixes, I still have nine outs to a nutted hand. And based on my previous king 10 hand, I'm going to lead jam on any diamond and hope for a safe run out. Alas, the turn is the 10 of clubs. Pretty horrendous if my opponent somehow had a bluff like queen jack of diamonds that gets there. But I still just believe he has pocket sixes. And when I check to him, he does a very good bet of all in. About $900 definitely prices me out. Don't think this opponent ever has a draw in this point playing this way. I think it's just full protection for a nutted hand. So his bet's going to work out. I'm going to let it go. Somewhat disappointed. Maybe just calling flop would have been better. But that's okay. Now we have queen 10 off suit in the cutoff. When it folds to me, I make it $20. I think it's good enough to open from this position. The big blind is the only color. So we're heads up to a flop, which comes 10-10-4 with two clubs. Well, most of the time when this is checked to me, I would check it back, give my opponent a chance to catch up, think I have too much of the board locked up, but sometimes you just have to bet when you flop three of a kind. My opponent will call it nines, eights, sevens, maybe a six, two clubs. There's hands that can pay me off here, so we're just going to start out with a $25 bet. My opponent makes the call, pretty happy to see that, looking for a blankish turn to keep firing which we somewhat get in the six of diamonds brings two diamonds out there again not really knowing how many hands i can get three streets from i consider checking this turn and then just decide clubs is only paying off this street if they have a draw and miss so gotta go for some value right now i bet 65 dollars my opponent doesn't take too long for making the call again all right hopefully i get a blankish river card but it is not a blank it's actually the queen of hearts so we fill up very unexpected in this spot but i'm not sure my opponent can pay off a bet of any size he so i'm gonna go very polar here if he has two clubs he's never calling if he has pocket nines maybe he'll talk himself into a call thinking that i have missed clubs which i would sometime so 250 is gonna be the sizing want to definitely go polar with it my opponent thinks for over 30 seconds, I'm really thinking I'm getting a call here, but then he eventually lets his cards go, so we do not get paid on this one. Would have been nice, would have been helpful after some of the bad runs I've had recently. But that's okay, now we have ace eight of spades in the big blind with a button limp. The small blind raised to 30, kind of a big sizing, but blind on blind, this hand is a pure call. Could even three bet it, honestly, but I called the 30, the button calls as well. We end up going three ways to a flop of jack six three rainbow when the small blind checks he pretty much never has a jack here i easily could i could have two pairs i got a four five and that's because there's one spade out there i have backdoor spades i'm gonna go for a bet here try to thin the field even if i win right now it would be a great pickup as i only have ace high so i bet 45 dollars the button is the only caller, which i'm really not too happy about as i've seen this opponent call down a 400 river bet after calling two previous bets with fourth pair and being correct so not really thinking i'm ever going to bluff this person unless i improve and the turn is the king of spades so i'm going to go for a small bet here try to keep the betting lead try to build the pot in case my spades hit not really expecting a fold all too often i bet 80 dollars what i'm really not expecting is my opponent to raise to 175. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? Well, I have the nut flush draw. I can't miss it every single time. And similarly to the ace forehand, if a spade peels on the river, I'm going to lead for a large sizing. If an ace peels, I'm actually very confident it would be the best hand. So pretty happy to call this one. And the river is the eight of diamonds. So we get a little bit of showdown value. It is possible my opponent did this with a six, as like I said, he's called down with fourth pair and really just unwilling to fold when he makes any piece of it, no matter how small. I don't think this is a card to lead on at all. So when I check it to my opponent, he checks it back and has jack 10 off suit. So jacks are higher than eights. I lose a slightly big one and I'm somewhat disappointed and for a final hand of note i start this hand with approximately 610 dollars in my stack and from the small blind i look down at pocket kings of the black variety with one limp a middle position player raised to 25 dollars 25 will not be enough i have kings i make it 85 dollars seems to be a decent sizing it folds all the way to the pre-flop aggressor who thinks for a little bit then starts counting out some green chips and eventually slides 300 into the middle didn't even ask for a count. I didn't need to know. We're going all in with this one. Happily with a $600 stack with kings. I almost snap jam it in his face, but I take a second, maybe even three or four before announcing all in, putting it in there. And when the dealer finally counts out, my stack is $610. My opponent starts thinking for a while. 
somewhat moaning and groaning. Saying how he 4-bet super light, and I just already know that this is just ace-5. Actually looking for a fold here, because I think an ace is just gonna crack me. Whenever someone says that they 4-bet super light, it's always a weak garbage ace, which still actually has plenty of equity against pocket kings. Especially when it's only $300 to call to win a pot, which will be $1,200. You only need 25% equity, and let's say ace-5 against kings is still has 30%. Ace-5 against ace-king? also still has 30%. He's getting technically the right price to call with pretty much all of his holdings, even knowing he's going to be behind. And when he eventually makes the call, we are running this one time. Let's see a good flop. Flop is 5-6-6. Six, six. All right, not the worst, I guess. You know, he shouldn't have ace-6 all too often, still beating ace-5. Turn deuce of diamonds. Hope he doesn't have diamonds. How about that little fella? How about that little guy? I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Good enough for me. You're my man now. River is another deuce, and he shows ace four of diamonds. What a fun game. So fun. What a wonderful life. Awesome. After that hand, I was into the game for $900, out for zero. Not a single chip left in my stack, which equates to $300 an hour loss across three hours, or 60 big blinds an hour. Yeah, directly after the pocket kings got cracked, reached in my pocket, was counting out another buy-in. I usually come with multiple bullets in case some run bad happens, or I just need to top off because some hands went the other way. But today, while I was counting out the money, I realized that I was incredibly angry after that hand, like, like more than just tilting. So before I finished counting it all out, I just kind of stood up and decided that I was not in a good mental state to keep playing. Knew the video would be short, knew it was uh, definitely a long drive for the finale of it to just be, be losing with a bad beat, but for anyone out there watching that's trying to get better at poker, this is a public service announcement, and if a big hand goes the other way, or you miss a draw, or you really just aren't running too well, take a moment and think about your mental state, see if you're, you know, in the right mindset to keep playing, or if you're just tunnel vision on trying to get money back, because saving extra buy-ins that might have gone away if you played in a bad mental state, how are you going to make more money long-term playing poker? On this day, I just decided that I would not be playing well if I put more money on the table, so it was time to walk away and hopefully get it back in the future. If you watched all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. If you subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton, and I will see you on the next one.